Ahoy! Today Ritzy invited me onto his podcast where we talked about a lot of things New World, a lot of things regarding release, plans, weapon balance and so on, just a bunch of different stuff and he suggested that I could upload the conversation on my channel as well, so that is what we're doing. In the background you'll see a ton of footage from the first time we met, did a bunch of duels there, just hung out, had a bit of fun. And to warm you up for all of this, I wanted to show you a clip from my Twitch channel. When I live streamed the beta, I actually completely randomly ran into Ritzy, who was on my server, which I didn't even know. And since he was on another faction at the time, well, we had a little bit of a fight. Or maybe get some duels going outside of that, so some PvP of some form. Um, and then... I'm gonna... Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, dude! Well, for the people that don't know who I am, as I'm pretty new, uh, I will be doing mainly PvP content. I'm a hardcore PvP gamer. Uh, I PvP'd in WoW, I PvP'd in Guild Wars 2, uh, for people that know that what that is. Uh, and I'm looking to create con content around builds, everything PvP that you can think of. So um, you'll see, be seeing me in future. Did you just say if you know what Guild Wars is? Are we actually at the point where people don't know what Guild what? Wars is? Hey, you never know. You never know. You never know. But um, yeah, so I'm how old. was your experience in Open Beta? Was it what you expected? Did you get all the footage that you um, wanted to get, like as a content creator? Like, did you did you do everything that you planned out to do? Like, what was right. going on there? So, uh, like, one of the issues that I had was that my uh, game wasn't running as well as I was hoping it would. Like, it was a bit laggy, especially around towns. Uh, I'm actually looking to get a get a CPU upgrade in the next days. I got outbid on eBay. I found a really good one. And then I was like, ah, I'm going to get it. And then this guy bid, like, 20 <laughs> bucks more last second. Um, Lost but, it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, PvP-wise, we unfortunately ended up on the, on the wrong server. We were on the same server, but... Uh, yeah, it wasn't as much yeah. PvP as we were hoping for. Yeah. Um, and footage-wise, I actually realized like I should have just recorded everything. Like I tried to record like most of the PVE fighting and most of the PvP fighting, but I feel like in hindsight I should have just recorded everything just to use it as filler stuff as well. But hey, lesson yeah. learned. Yeah, I definitely did that. I had some uh, dungeon content and stuff as well, even though that's not like what I might prim primarily do. Sorry. Um, yeah, I got it. So then I can just have it in the background for stuff as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I got I got a full Mrine run, but I kind of want to use that as its own video, and then I guess I can't use it yeah. again. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I definitely had those issues as well in the towns. Like, um, as I said before, uh, uh, I was getting about forty frames when it was busy, which I think is an optimization thing. I hope I, I hope that it's an mm. optimization. I mean, in uh, the in the last beta, it was better. So, like in the closed beta, so I think yeah, I was getting consistent sixty in towns even when it was busy in the closed yeah. beta. So I think they've just like kind of stuffed something up there, or they've changed a couple of things, and that's what happened. Um, but definitely out in the open world, in my experience, uh, my frames were higher. Mm -hmm. I was getting like one forty, one fifty ish. <sighs> Like, Dude, I can only dream. I can get like, <laughs> you get like ninety if it's like a really good time. Well, out in the open world, like not 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 in a town. Yeah, no, I mean like in you at must best. Be really <laughs> throttled by your CPU. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. It's just like some games use like the the Ryzen one thousand one thousand seven hundred so well because it has eight cores, but most yeah. games just don't. They just use two cores and then those have to be fast. And if that's not the case, then rip. And I can't overclock it anymore because otherwise it gets fried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a good thing. Um, I'm sure like everyone kind of would already know, but like how much work actually goes into behind behind the scenes with your like, like the PVP scaling one would have been insane. Like I know I was involved in that a little bit mm. and I was only there for a small portion. Like you obviously have to do a lot of math, math behind it. You got to do a lot of calculations, a lot of spreadsheets like like how much time is actually invested into stuff like that? Oh, it's 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 definitely a lot of time, but I would say the math itself is usually not even that much of the time, depending on the exact uh, video, of course. Mm. But usually, like most of the time, is consumed by just listing everything properly, sorting it out, figuring out what data do I need, like that. Because um, that that is actually a good example, right? If you look at the spreadsheets from the uh, testing that we did from the PVP scaling, yep. there's a lot of like. Uh, <laughs> somewhat irrelevant data in there because I didn't run all the tests at the same time so I didn't know exactly what I needed so in hindsight yeah. for example if I if I would have known at the time I would have given you a, 
a level like 28 or 29, what you were at the time, a hatchet as well. So I could have compared like all the level data for all the hatchets as stuff. well. Yeah, that would have been a lot more yeah. um, data to like compare to. So I mean, I mean, I had, I had it from everyone else because I realized it afterwards. So it was fine. It was still three points, but it was um, th th that type of stuff takes up a lot of time to just like, you know, make sure you have the right data and then not have to go back on it, especially at the moment when the game's not out yet. So you have to test everything very quickly and then hope you have everything and work with, you know, whatever you can find. Um, yeah, especially being three days only. We only had three, yeah, four, yeah. <laughs> four days-ish. I didn't play on the last day, but um, yeah, like, no, I can definitely see that, like, you have to make sure that everything's right. Because yeah. if you start making calculations based off a theory that you've made and your entire theory is wrong, then all your maths will be wrong. And then exactly. all your, everything you're saying to people is going to be wrong. Um, <laughs> and you so got you to be careful with that, right? Like, you, you don't oh, want to yeah. end up being the guy that says things that are just completely wrong <laughs> yeah and like people that do that and they're like well no that's not the case that's the, that is not the case yeah. <laughs> like that's not ex how that works at all yeah but yeah. At, at the same time like i always have this mentality like with um especially in gaming you know when like most numbers you do cannot be 100 percent perfect you cannot you cannot account for every possible scenario like you can't account for every ability that could possibly be used in that moment and how that would change scaling and everything else so like everything that i do is like to the best of my knowledge and i'm always open to be like corrected if something you know goes deeper than i realized as well mm. so like i think you have to like keep an open mind with stuff like that because it's not you know it's not chemis chemistry or something where like things will blow up on you if it's not 100 percent right oh, well that's right like in the end you are saying that it's theory crafting so it's a theory in the end yeah and it's like if people are going to get flame you for that then it's like well it was a theory and it didn't work out, but yeah. you know, nine times out of 10, I've been right. You know? Yeah, exactly, so, exactly. You know, and like, so. I mean, I have a good track record, I would say in, in New World. I had one mess up at the start where I didn't quite understand how scaling worked yet. And actually yeah. I, I gotta say like uh, Reddit was at the time because I guess everyone was still a bit new as well. Surprisingly forgiving about that. Normally you get just get slaughtered if you get something oh, wrong. Oh yes, they, like, they, they find one tiny thing. Yeah, and but they, they, were they were not, they were nice. They were like, <laughs> they were like um, you know, oh yeah, you figured that one out, that's interesting that part you figured out um, how the diminishing return works so that's really cool we need confirmation on that uh, on this part you should have a look again because weapon scaling works differently and I was like okay I'll yeah. have a look again and I did it again and uh, corrected it and yeah now it's uh, right. hopefully well, better <laughs> I mean okay so I think like you get asked this a lot and I think this is going to confirm this for a lot of people um where the heck are you actually from? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what, what, what do you, where are you from? The, the more interesting question is where you are from, because that one shocked me. <laughs> really? No, I'm, I'm oh, yeah, true. That is that is true. I, uh, that little secret there. <laughs> I'm, I'm originally from uh, from Germany, because, uh, like, I, I'm, yep. like I've, I've got this weird accent. Like, German people can usually tell that my accent is German, and some, like, other people can obviously tell as well. Um, but it's like a weird mix, because in school I learned mostly british english then everything the else online is american english like you know any movie you yeah. watch or whatever is american english and then i uh backpacked in australia for two years when i was younger and yeah. now i've lived here again for two years i don't really have any australian accent because i don't really hang out with that many actual aussies with like strong well, accents how old were you when you came over to you uh well that was two years ago how old was i two years ago um or like the first time like the first time oh, the because first obviously time, you, you, um, grew, you grew up in germany right yeah, yeah. so first time like was your accent was... isn't gonna go away <laughs> yeah just, the first time was when i was like 20 ish 20 or 21. yeah and then you came back later on well yeah much later <laughs> yeah 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 um because your voice sounds like it would be perfect for radio or something like that like, yeah, like that's what i mean I think, are you, I think are you people saying watch your videos wait wait wait, like, wait. You, you do realize that you do, <laughs> wait, wait wait you do realize that the wait no it's actually the face perfect for radio that's what it is <laughs> yeah. i was gonna say normally that's an insult <laughs> no i mean yeah both both like, i mean i could i could go to sleep to your voice like is what i'm saying like you know what i mean i could be there and it's not like it's, it's not like really sporadic like it's nice and calm and it like makes me feel like a little baby you know? like, <laughs> enjoy it. Like, I, like i just feel like comfortable you know watching your videos even if it's just on my other screen and i'm listening you know so, i don't need to see the statistics like i did that with your um your most current video that you brought out like i just had it on to listen to it while i was doing other things and i still was getting the information that i felt that i needed from um like what you were trying to get across mm -hmm. 
So what you're saying is I need to switch up my brand and just just go a bit more heavy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Like start like psyching people out like eight, eight minutes into a video just scream and then go back to normal and act like nothing happened <laughs> uh, no actually that's yeah. it's it's funny you should say that because um uh people are sometimes not not so much with new world but with uh with smite especially they were somewhat shocked when i was streaming because when i was streaming i would like sometimes i would just straight up rage and it was a very um They'd be like, oh, like, hang on. Yeah, like, it was a very different this. vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, let it, I let it shine through in, like, some slight videos back then. I had some uh, rant videos uh, yeah. where I sometimes, you know, did that a bit. But, like, obviously, if I do, like, informational content, it's not like I can suddenly be like, hey, guys, look at this info. It's so insane, yo. <laughs> some people are very excited. They're like, man, this is, like, the craziest thing ever. And, da -da -da. and it's like, but you're, like, calming so, and just explaining yeah, I... it. And everyone can, like... <laughs> absorb it in a nice way i think i think like i think i'd fucking die if i <laughs> 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 if i actually were doing like super hype every every theory crafting video i think it just doesn't work like look no, at these numbers <laughs> these numbers are insane <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the scaling was changed five percent <laughs> yeah oh man but yeah okay so moving on to our question here our main topic which is what we are uh, trying to talk about today in the first place is what is your plans for launch week? And then I'll go over sort of like what I'm going to do. Right. So I'm hopefully, <laughs> hopefully if I uh, <laughs> manage my time right, I will have a lot of videos prepared so I don't have to actually make them during that time because I feel like that You're might be, be very brutal. Like mm -hmm. I did that, I did that a little bit with, um, with the open beta. I had like uh, one Some or two overlap. videos. Gaming, uh, videos, editing, yeah. all the stuff. And it's just accumulated. Yeah. I, I, I was able to cut it kind of short because I just did it like I just showed the spreadsheet had my uh had my little marauder talking and uh and as you can see right here ladies and gentlemen <laughs> so beautiful Man, I love it by the way I absolutely well, I thank think you. it's like the best thing ever shout, shout out to Devane who made it I, I'm just you know I'm just uh, I just had the idea um and uh yeah so like that was pretty brutal so I don't really want to do that again I really want to be able to just play and stream um and if it all works out, then I probably have like videos prepared. I will have a bunch of food prepared in the freezer that I just need to microwave and, uh, <laughs> and eat in between. Yep. Um, yeah. So I was thinking initially, like, you know, I kind of want to be awake for, for um, the actual launch because that's when everyone's going to yep. be playing, obviously. I will be as well, yep. So you can like rush to the start. But like the Correct. more I think about it, the more I'm like, it depends. It depends a lot on when they decide to launch, like what time. But if it's the same as open beta and they launch like at midnight. night, then I'm thinking yep. maybe I don't even play that long. Maybe I just play like two hours um, and then go to sleep. Uh, like they like do the patch notes before as well. Obviously, that's going to be super important. Um, yes. yes, definitely. I'll and be doing that and then just uh, just get up early when everyone else is kind of crashing uh, and just keep like somewhat of a normal schedule. Because I realized like trying to like work around a weird schedule and potentially bring out like pushing out some videos and playing and streaming it's just it's just not healthy it's a lot. it is a lot yeah um well i'll be doing the complete opposite i will be staying up like i did the first time probably 28 hours and then going to a bed at a normal time yeah. and waking up early because i think even though like your theory is good i think new players will be coming in doing the same thing as you and if you um if you start when everyone else starts you can get a really good um like gap yeah. with the people that are not as, as hardcore. Yes, but so but you'll be ahead of the crowd and no one will be there. No Counterpoint. One yes. You're yes. just scared of PvP. That's what you want to be ahead of the crowd. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. no. That, no, I'm like not, seriously though. Seriously though. Um, the problem that I see, like I want to, I want to PvP a lot, even on launch. And I think yeah. the best way to get a lot of PvP is to play when people are playing. And that was my problem last time that my sleep check schedule got like so thrown around. That I effectively ended up on in the middle of the night. Yeah, I played in the middle of the night, and then I was tired in the early evening when everyone else was playing, which yeah. meant that I had less PvP than I would have otherwise. And so I'm like, if I just align with everyone's sleep schedule, I'm gonna get ahead by just playing all day. Like most people have responsibilities at some yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Some people have jobs and yeah. that's a lot. And <laughs> I, and also, I, and also, I know, I know, like how to get ahead, right? I know, I know the strategies if I want to get a little bit of a lead. That's right. So if you do fall behind you can go all right this is what i'm going to do today and i'll get i'll catch up yeah 
So, so I'm thinking maybe I'll just keep like a normal schedule and uh, and just uh, focus on having a lot of PvP while leveling. But the problem is that it, it depends a lot on if all the quest spawns are fixed. Because some like side quest spawns that kind of unlock a bunch of other quests, like in Everfall for example, it's just one guy that spawns every, what, six minutes or so, and you don't even necessarily get the, the tag for him if you hit him. And it's just like, if those experience. are still bad, then you can't even PvP flag there because you have to be in a party to even get the tag. So it's, yeah, it's well, bad. On our server, as you know, the Forge Master got stuck in a rock for a whole day. And wait, that's, wait, uh, that is a main story quest guy. Like, you need to kill him to progress. Wait, where did, and, wait, wait, was that, was that early or late? I didn't even... So, the Forge Master is when you're going to make your Azos staff. Yeah. And you have to use the anvil behind the boss. Yeah. Right? So, you kill the boss and then you and then the quest unlocks the anvil for you to be able to use it to be able to construct the, I think, just the handle yeah, yeah. of, of the Azos staff I, it, from memory. I may be wrong. Yeah. Um, but that boss was kited or someone tried to run away and then it got clipped into like a rock formation just outside where it spawns <laughs> because it wasn't far away enough from the spawn it didn't like despawn which is what it should be doing i don't know if they have despawn mechanics in this game i know that it's tr it was trying to run back to its area but because it was clipped into a rock like no one could get damage on it no one could like move it. It wasn't resetting. <laughs> like it was just stuck there for like an entire day. Oh, it God. was ridiculous. And it was so funny because every time I ran past there, you see people trying to AOA it and like these groups of people around this <laughs> rock with this guy's little head just popping out. Like, <laughs> like, and they're like, we can't hit him. What are we going to do? So everyone that joined the open beta later on literally couldn't get past the, like the main story quest line <laughs> when they got there. And I was like, I'm so lucky that I got that done like yesterday. You yeah, I must, I must have done that before as well because yeah. I didn't, I didn't And it was it. stuck like that from, I, I think, until the end. Like I wasn't on the last day, but it was definitely the second day. It was like that for ages. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I hope I don't run into anything like that. But then again, I... If you don't progress with the main story for a while and you have to catch up later on that, like whatever. If you're high level, it's, it's super easy to do. No. Yeah, it's, that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm probably gonna like do some like open world dungeon farming anyways, I guess. So yeah, it'll... Yeah, like Dead Man's Cove, yeah. like stuff like that. Uh, that's really good. Like I got a lot of weapon XP from that. Yeah. Um, once I hit around 25, I just went there to level up a couple like the great axe and stuff because i was running the bow spear for like 90 percent of the open beta and then i wanted to try uh the great axe and the warhammer just in case we were going into a war which unfortunately didn't end up happening for <laughs> us um which is kind of lame um there was a lot of little contradictory things happening um between the syndicate and the marauders on our server because apparently what was supposed to happen is the syndicate was supposed to be taking everfall and the Marauders were supposed to be taking what they did take, which I think was um, not Monarchs. What's the other one? Uh, Windsward. Windsward. So they took Windsward and we were supposed to get that so then we could get some wars in. And it just didn't end up happening. So that was Yeah, because people were actively fighting against the wars. They were actually actively doing PvP quests to prevent the wars. Yeah, and I'm like, why? Like, this is the open beta. Let's experience it. Let's get more people involved in what a war entails, like how it works and stuff like that. And we yeah. just didn't end up being able to do it, which was really sad. It was it was so funny when I, I went down to First Light and I was like, maybe we can start a war here. It's uh, owned by Covenant. And yeah. I, I claimed the fort and did some PvP quests and they came at me with like four people. <laughs> They're like, yeah. you're, not, you're not farming any points. Yet. Yeah, no. And same without, at, um, I think it was Monarch's Bluff. That's a really bad one where uh, really far out on the west side is where the, where the fort is out over this weird like bridge. Um, I tried going out there and trying to sort of do stuff over there. And yeah, there was just a lot of retaliation. Yes. <laughs> there was just a lot of retaliation. I was like, Come on, guys! Like, let's do this. You know what I mean? It would have been super fun. I've never been in a war myself, so yeah. I would have really enjoyed like seeing what that's all about. I've only seen videos, and to see if those lag problems, especially, were fixed. Well, um, it looks like they were. It looks like from some other videos I've seen, it looks like wars were a lot better in that regard. Like yeah. way, way, way better. So that's yeah. good, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, so, how are you 
in this time that we have, we've got 11 days before the release. How are you preparing yourself for the launch week? Like not necessarily in your editing sense, but just as in to prepare yourself for the game. Like, are you strategizing like your leveling technique? Like obviously you're going to no. choose whether or not you're going to stay up or you're not, but what else are you doing behind the scenes? No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very chill on that regard because again, the most important thing for me is not to be the first level 60. I'm not going to do that. I, I, there are enough kids out there who will play like whatever, 60 something plus hours and not sleep. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I've, I've, mm -hmm. I'm too old for 24 hour streams. <laughs> yeah. See, I said that, but coffee said something different. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't even, I don't even drink coffee. So yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. No, I wouldn't have made it. Dude, yeah, I, I, coffee, I, I, no that, no coffee doesn't work for me. It just, it doesn't make me more awake. It just gives me stomach cramps and makes me jittery. That's all. <laughs> well, I mean, we all know what coffee does. If you have a coffee and a cigarette, if you smoke, I don't smoke. No, 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 I don't smoke. <laughs> but, but if you smoke and have a coffee, you, everyone knows that you'll be in the toilet within. Yeah. See, I don't even, I don't need to smoke for that. See, so that's counterproductive. That's not efficient gaming. Exactly. That's time wasted on the toilet. <laughs> well, just, ho just hold it in for three days and you'll be right. Is that what you're trying to say? Or what? <laughs> no, I'm saying this, I'm just gonna, not going to drink coffee I'm, I'm a very very uh like strong advocate against against uh caffeine Seven. for gaming i think caffeine Seven. caffeine for like workouts and stuff i'm you know go for it but like yeah. i don't yeah, i don't I'll like the whole g fuel industry and stuff like that you know yeah but there are other things like caffeine that you can use now like now that we've like kind of developed as a society i mean it's been around for a while now and uh it's a, a lot more known now but there are things that you can drink like electrolytes and things like that yeah. that don't have caffeine in them that still give you like that lift up of yeah, yeah, like yeah. energy and stuff like that so there is no need so like for sure is, i mean i I, li I literally like physically i wouldn't even have a problem staying up long i don't even need caffeine for that i can go for a very long time i just know that I'll hate my my body the next day, you know. I'm just we're gonna wake up with a headache yeah. and feel groggy, and then if I have to stream the day as well, I'm just gonna be like, nah, I'm not feeling it. So yeah. I'm not gonna do that. But yeah, uh, in terms of in terms of prep, I um, yeah, because I'm mainly after PvP. Uh, I'm not really gonna prep that much. Like I know what I'm gonna do in terms of uh, you know leveling and farming the the, the few yep. early tricks that you need to know. Uh, I have yep. those down. But um, yeah, because I don't want to really hard outpace everyone. I'm completely fine with just, uh, you know, bonking some skulls and that's going to be my goal. So I don't really need to make that many plans compared to some others that are looking to like super yeah. min max on launch. Um, and uh, other than that, like my, my week's prep is definitely just content prep and meal prep, even though I, I don't even know. I'm, I might, yeah, I'm, that, I, I've got a mini fridge right next to me. Oh, <laughs> so I'm jealous. I just put stuff in there and then we're, away, we're ready to go. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of... Anymore, uh, but... Of legitimately just for this week, uh, like just getting a, or like not this week, like like maybe the month, I don't know, whatever. Getting like yeah. some uh, meal prep order thing, you know, where you can order from like like U Foods or something like that. We're not promoted by them, please don't. Do yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna, I, I was gonna name a name, but I don't want to uh, name yeah, it. We're like, not sponsored by any of these people. You know, I'm not. Uh, it's good yeah, food. yeah, it's I'm, not, I'm not sponsored by any of like. There's there's like a bunch of like things in Australia where you can just order like uh, yeah. prepared food that you basically just microwave. You can even get it from Coles. You could just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm looking for something like more calorie intense i think like i need i need my intake in that regard <laughs> you need higher calories is what you're saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat, eat yeah. more yeah eat more yeah i mean yeah exactly eat. but but like i don't want to buy like whatever five colds thing for one day or something you know <laughs> yeah that's right that's right all right so, well what sort of build are you looking for like are you just going to do your own build are you going to go the optimal build like how are you gonna well gauge you're going to do something different than what you've yes. already done in the past with yes. the close beater yes. and, and the open beater? Yes. Uh, so, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen. Or how, like, it depends a little bit on the changes they announced last minute as well, obviously. If like, they suddenly yeah. nerf the hatchet berserk, for example, that would yeah. make a big difference for a lot of people's plans, I think. Um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm thinking... I'm thinking I'm going to run, like, the weapons that I used to run as well, unless there are, like, major changes to other ones. I don't think it's worth running something like Warhammer or Spear, but I've always done a little bit of everything because uh, I like having like at least some mastery on all weapons so I can use abilities. Uh, yeah. If I ever and want later to down the track, that's not going to be an issue because once you're level sixty, yeah. But um, even before you that, max like, it out, like you're going to be leveling a bunch of stuff anyway, and they'll all almost be level twenty before level sixty. Yeah, yeah, but I, like even even uh, outside of that, like for example, I like to have a hammer level just if I have to go into uh, any ancient area, any skeleton area. 
because it yep. just makes it so much quicker. So I have to like to have a hammer at least on a level where I have like three abilities. A couple of skills, yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't need every like maxed out perk, right? It still does. It still does a ton more damage than using a hatchet there. So you know, just give, give me give me the the half decent min maxing. Um, mm. But the three weapons that I'm looking to have more mastered than the others are uh, Hatchet and, and Great Axe, which were like the ones before already, the traditional ones, uh, but also Sword and Shield. Because Sword and Shield, I think, is super fun to play. Uh, we'll see what changes happen to that, obviously. But I, yeah. I have a very interesting uh, combination, both uh, Sword and Shield Hatchet as well as Sword and Shield uh, Great Axe. Yep. And I want to experiment with those, and I want to get good with it as well. So I need to practice it against like actual players. So I have to run it. Well, like uh, as you showed me in um, Open Beta, the the changes to sword were actually really really good. Like, yeah. Um, sure, it, it still doesn't pull ahead of a couple of things, but the leap is definitely a standout for the. the yeah, sword yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's there's some more fun stuff. I don't want to spoil it yet because I'm gonna have a funny video about it. But uh, there's some more fun <laughs> stuff. Uh, yeah. that, 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 <laughs> that is happening with the sword now. So there's, there's definitely some cool stuff they can do. So I really enjoyed yeah. that. And uh, I want to I wanna effectively be good at all melee weapons. Uh, they just have so to be So you'll be going down the strength attribute, of course. You, you'll yeah. be all the way down there. So you'll be using your hatchets, your great axes, yeah, yeah. your war hammers, and all the things that come with that. Exactly. Um, so, but yeah. like the thing for me is obviously they have to be like half decent in PvP and not allowing yeah. people to just run away. So I don't think the hammer will be like <laughs> priority. And I think if you were to run hammer and you're up against another melee comp, it could be viable. But I mean, you need to be diverse yeah. in a PvP scenario. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and, and plus even in melee versus melee, the hammer is so easy to avoid. Uh, I did some duels with. Um, uh, David Honeycomb, who was level 34. Yeah, he's actually in my Discord, and I didn't notice that <laughs> that was the guy, and I saw him in your video, and I'm like, this guy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he mentioned, he mentioned, like, oh, yeah, you're in the, in the he's Discord. Talking well. in here. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, he's talking to him. Yeah, he's guy is talking to me right now, and he now, he's on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> now he's here. But yeah, I, I played against him, right? And he was level 34. Uh, so we played a lot of duels at the, on the last day, we just having some fun. Um, yeah. And he was running Great X Hammer, and I realized that even there, like, you know, I. Obviously, you can you can mess up and you can like jump into a hammer stun accidentally and stuff. Yeah. But generally speaking, it was still so easy to avoid Ooh. most hammer abilities, and it was just it, it annoyed me that it shouldn't be right. It should be it should be fair and yeah. Well, I mean, look, the warhammer is a very big, it's a big hammer. It's like very slow animations. And as I said in the previous podcast with Pritch, like people are gonna start learning what abilities are what, what the animation looks like when they're going for a particular ability and people are going to avoid it. It like in time, people are going to have a lot more knowledge in a PVP sense mm. um, of what's coming, especially with like the great acts, like me and Pritch talked about how gravity, well, it's super strong, but the animation for it is so obvious. It's this huge, yeah. like under swing and you know that that's what it's going to be. So if you preemptively dodge and you're like, not at point blank range, you're going to avoid that ability. And that's a 30 well, second cooldown that they've wasted. I mean, that's that's one side, but a good, on the other hand, the, 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 the great X player will also get better and they will use their uh, graph right. well once your stamina is down and not before. A hundred percent. There's two sides to the coin, but I mean, um, yeah, it, it's like the same with like your video. Like, uh, I think I timestamped it for you. I said that like 12 something. Um, you you literally yeeted your uh your gravity well and it, it went into the sky but pulled the guy up yeah like and, and you like that was like a really good throw like i thought that was really amazing like wait i haven't actually I, didn't, I haven't even seen that type of stuff you have to show me later. yeah 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 <laughs> so you liked my other comment but um yeah i did too because then I, I watched i watched it further through the video and um and yeah i saw you lobbed that gravity well and you got that big gravity well up in the air which a lot of people don't know that if you aim straight up you can do a gravity well straight into the air if you really wanted to because it's a directional control yeah um but yeah like duke got that hit on the whoever he's dueling and he lobbed it max range and in the air like perfectly spherical thing above the ground and the guy was still stuck in it so like it was it was so good it was it's just the, so good it's the anti-gravity <laughs> yeah it was a godly throw of that calculated where the heck was this before <laughs> yeah, yeah. um yeah but like I, i'm looking to try those weapons um i i want to i want to use the spear as well but I feel like the spear is—it's—it's it's only worth it if you use a ranged weapon, 
Um, I think I agree with that because I, I had, as I said in my speed video as well, uh, I had 50 hours of experience with it and I find it needs to be like, especially the way I built it. I built it um, like completely CC based. Yeah. So no damage over time, no bleeds, no like heavy attacks. It was all based around your light attacks, really quick movements and just locking down your enemy. And whether that's locking down your enemy, switching to your other weapon or locking down your enemy and getting space like, or trying to get damage, I think it's really good for that, but you need to have something that's paired with it really well. It's on its own. It just doesn't have the, the grunt. Yeah. Um, not in the build I made anyway. And the, the, the problem is the problem is pretty straightforward, right? The problem is the the basic attack tracking at, at melee range. So like you can sidestep the hits. Um, yeah, it is very it is very like this with yeah, the spear. Yeah, like, yeah, and it's, it's, very and like it's, that, it's more the, forward. It's more forward than the other weapons as well. Like the hitbox is more forward, and it yeah. doesn't move you as much, which is bad because you want to be moved by the attack. You want to be able to clip. You yeah. want to be able to get the, like close that gap. But, yeah. Again, uh, it makes up for it in its abilities. I think. Yeah, and that, and that's the thing where um, where like it comes in as, as a ranged defensive tool, right? It's like kind of like the rapier, where you punish someone the yeah. moment they get close, the moment they yeah. like they have to get close to you with their stamina, and then they're out of stamina when they're like near you, and then you can punish them with the spear because they don't have the exactly. stamina to dodge that's away. Right. You want to like keep poking, keep poking, and then if they get in your face, you control the fight yeah. rather than them controlling the fight. But the problem so, is. Yeah. The problem is that once you hit like later stages and everyone, if any, everyone is still running hatchet, they will have yeah. upgraded berserk, which has the. Uh... Yeah, and you can't do anything to yeah. them. I experienced that myself. Like yeah. I would go into somebody, they'd berserk. I'd go for a CC, and I'm like, oh, like <laughs> that, like I can't do anything about this. Even though my sweep has grit, berserk is um, whatever that trait is. I think it's the last. Yeah, passive, the last one. Yeah. The last one in the hatchet mitigates that yeah which i didn't think it did because i was testing that because i'm like okay grit is an unstoppable attack it should not be able to be stopped right no, the, the, so based the, on that's sweep, not the problem the attack isn't yeah. stopped the attack the attack goes yeah, through the, the hit isn't stopped but the cc is stopped yeah which but, is what you're looking for so yeah, that's it's, where that's the differential basically basically what it is is that the last uh tree for anyone who doesn't know it, uh provides grit as well like perma grit during the duration of berserk um i yep. think it's, it's labeled differently because it's more than just grit it's not even just during the attacks i forgot what it's called um yep. but because of that you can't use a sweep you can't knock someone down uh yep. i'm not even sure if you can use the javelin because it's a knockdown as well no the jab is considered a a knockback so yeah no they can't be knocked back they can't be immobilized okay they so sorry they can be immobilized that's the only thing that i'm pretty sure traps work stunts work stunts work the uh yeah. the the kick well, still works stunts don't work wait what really well i do sweep and that's a, a no sweep, sweep's not a stun sweep's a knockdown but uh the oh, really? uh no sorry yeah no my bad sorry i was talking about not sweep um vault kick vault kick doesn't work interesting it's hang on let me Check how it's labeled. I'm actually. Let me have a look at it. Let me have a look at this as well. I'm, I'm actually. I'm pretty curious. sure it's a, it's a 1.5 second stun. So because it's a stun, it doesn't do anything. Hang on. Let me let me have a look at the. <laughs> Please uh... excuse his green background at the moment. Oh, it hasn't gone green. Okay, it's gonna be it's fixed in a green. second. Um, it's gone green. All kick wait. is a 1.5 oh, second stun. Okay, so the, it's it's labeled as in berserk. Your attacks are uninterruptible during berserk, yeah. and you can't be staggered. Staggered. That's I weird. don't know if that means like frostbitten. So see how that kind of staggers you. Yeah. Or is that referring to uh, like maybe stamina? I'm not sure like so, what they mean by staggered there. Like that's very new to me. I, I, if you know. So, so I know that there. knockback and knockdown fall under stagger. That's the annoying okay, thing. Okay, so that would be stagger then. Yeah, but as far uh, as I'm aware, you should still be able to vault kick. The problem is that if they have berserk on, they have increased mobility anyways, increased movement speed. Yeah. Uh, and a vault kick is almost impossible to hit, like if someone is just running into you and running around you. Yeah, it has got a nice range on it. And once you start understanding it, I think it's a lot easier to hit. But yeah, vault kick, it was probably, it's a, a lot like this again, like with its, with its attack, it's a yeah. lot like this. Yeah. It's very pinpointed. So if you aren't like thinking ahead, then you're not going to land it. And it still and, has, and it still has a pretty significant delay as well, like a very big animation beforehand. Yeah, you see, you go up on your spear and then you have to like lunge forward. So it does, I think the animation itself is close to two seconds, which is a long time. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure it's like a 1.5 second, like the whole animation itself. You press the ability, you go up on the stick and then you come out. That's a long time. 1.5 seconds in a PvP sense um, is a dodge, is, a, is, is like a counter to it. Like they can CC me while I'm in that state. 
as yeah. well. So like, there's a lot of things I can do. Yeah. So that's that's why I'm like a bit concerned with the spear as well because eventually people are gonna have that hatchet upgrade and then they just, yeah, they're just gonna run you down and what's you your response? Right? You know, yeah, you just have to yeah, dodge a lot. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so in that sense, uh, as you were saying, like, what are the main weapons that you're gonna be looking looking at? Yeah, I, I don't know. Sword, sword, uh, hatchet, great axe for sure. But I don't know which ones of the three will be like the ones that survive or if I'm just going to do all three and just swap constantly and confuse everyone. Uh, oh, yeah, so one sure. thing that I really hope they change about the sword, though, um, yeah. is the weight on the shields. Because right now the shields have like quite a lot Ridiculous, of weight. Right? Um, and while having a lot of weight, they don't provide much armor at all. So yeah. you kind of have to like... The kite shield would be understandable if it was quite heavy. Yeah. Um, but the round shield should be like quite mobile and should be like something like strapped to your arm, like how you see in movies and stuff, how it's like really, they can move quite easily. Yeah. So it should be quite light. So the, so the problem that I have with it is that basically using the shield messes up your min-maxing in terms of uh, the items that you should wear. Like you, you basically have to change your entire armor uh, if you're close to weight cap just to put on a shield. And what I'm hoping they do, what I'm really hoping they do is um, that they change it so that the uh, shield itself doesn't have weight, but you can only use specific shields uh, in specific weight categories. So if you are heavy currently, you can use any of the shields. Um, yeah, so you can use the kite, the round or the, there's like the lighter round one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And then, but if you're in medium, you can't use the kite shield. You can only use the lighter shield. And then in light, you can use the lightest shield. I think that's actually a brilliant idea. So I that think it's, that's... it's just locked to the weight class, but doesn't change your weight because... Yeah. Yeah, you know. Right now, no, it that, cripples, that it cripples the second weapon that you use along with the sword, which doesn't really make sense. Because that one will have, like, in that on that weapon, you will have less armor because you're also using a sword. Yeah. And I don't, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's but, I mean, that, no, I think that's... Like, I didn't even think of that. I haven't had much experience with Sword and Shield. Yeah. So I didn't realize that, uh, like, what, what the fundamentals is around Sword and Shield. But that's a brilliant idea. I think I, I would be all for that. Like, all the really tanky classes will go into the plate, especially in PvE. And they'll want to have a Kite Shield. Because a Kite Shield has more physical and elemental resist resistances. Yeah. Um, then, as you say, I didn't even know there was three types of shield. I knew there was a round and the kite, but is there one in between that as well? I, th I don't even know what they call it, but I'm pretty sure there are three different types, yeah? With yeah. three different well, weights I, as well. I'm unsure, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, I think there um, was something in the patch notes about all three, three types as well. Yeah, but yeah, no, I think that's a, a brilliant idea and that uh, having that medium one, uh, as I said, uh, if you want to be super heavy and be diverse and choose any one, then great. Medium, then you're limited to like that medium one or the lower one, uh, and then in light, only being able to do the like being able to wait into that like category so like yeah no i definitely agree with that i think that's a brilliant idea the, the problem is like right the the alternative would be to just give each of the shields appropriate like weight and armor but the way that yep. you could abuse that is you could use a heavy shield with very high armor in in the otherwise low weight class and probably get a pretty significant armor advantage from it so it's very yeah. annoying to balance <laughs> yeah i mean well there's everything's gonna have some sort of balance sort of thing anyway but i i think like what they did with the weight changes in the open beta were a lot better and it made a lot mm -hmm. more sense yeah like yeah, they made sure. a lot more sense because as i said as for the people that don't know in the closed beta we were able to wear full plate gear with own with um i think it was just the medium helmet and you'd still be in the medium category and you still yeah. have all like those physical and elemental resistances and that was just absolutely diabolical like <laughs> like what do you mean like you still have the mobility of a medium player but you're wearing 80 percent like plate gear yeah so yeah it didn't make much sense and i really liked the way that they did it in the open beta i think they they fixed that problem for sure 100 percent. yeah yeah i think i think the way it is right now is great you can wear like a little bit of heavy and medium if you wear a little bit of light in some slots but yeah it's it's just like full medium is super straightforward full light is super straightforward and everything else is the usual min maxing basically yeah that's right that's right well what are like your expectations for the release like what what do you expect from it are you are you hoping for certain things are there certain um like 
patches that you're expecting? Are there certain patches that you haven't heard about that you may want to be coming or any future content that you want to see? Hmm. Wait, let me put on my, my thinking face. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, like I said, for, for, for example, I said in my last podcast with Pritch that I think in the PvP scene specifically, you can sp speak about anything, PvE or whatever, but specifically PvP because that's where I sit all the time. I think some sort of arena or some sort of ranking system for PvP should be implemented, whether it's open world uh, or, or in an instance like an arena type setting like 1v1s, 2v2, 3v3s. I think it would bring life to PvP on top of what's already there. I agree, but I also have a feeling they're not going to do that on launch. I have a feeling that's no, something... I don't gonna... think they'll do it on launch either. I don't have that expectation, but I would like to see that for in future, like be something that they're thinking about. Well, like, we, we, know that they're, we know that they're thinking about it because there was like some, some data mining yeah. of potentially having those. Um, yes, yeah. But I didn't know that. That's great. That's good, <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, good yeah. to know. Bring it at me. Come on. <laughs> I think I, I, don't, I don't remember the specifics, but I think it was something like two v two, three v three, five v five, or something. Where like the considerations. Yeah, I, think, I think like it would be really cool, and um, uh, like having like some sort of vendor where <clears throat> there's like PvP type things in there. You know what I mean? Maybe not being used out in the open world, but just just in general, like using in arenas or like in um, Outpost Rush, just having those like little rewards that make you feel a bit more unique by being a PvP player. Mm -hmm. So like, obviously there's always the, the two fronts, right? You have the, the people that say arenas is what we want. And you have the people who say, if we have arenas, no one will open world PvP anymore. Absolutely right. We spoke about that before too. Yeah. Like so in that's, the last podcast, that's I said the same tough one right so what i'm I thinking is think... no, i think sorry, in, you can you can do it with like some some sort of limitations like some people suggested that you can only play for example a certain amount of uh, of arena matches per day uh or something like that which i don't I, think limiting it would be a good idea but something around that that's the question like what is what is a good way to well, solve it i think there's no perfect example, answer for example how well did it like they gave you a specific amount of what they call conquest points, which was your PVP points for people that don't know, um, you could only earn a certain amount a week. And that would diminish, like, so the first week you get the most, you'd probably like, let's hypothetically say a thousand. Mm -hmm. But then the next week, you'd only get, that cap would only be increased by 250. So you could only get 250. Then it would get lower and lower and lower and lower as it went on because, because of the pool of your, um, your PVP currency would be capped at whatever it would be at the end of the season. Uh -huh. So doing that meant people went really hard in the first week and tried to get to cap. But once they got to cap, they didn't have as much incentive to do it. You'd only really be doing it for either raiding or, um, or for fun where people just farming out the tokens for the gear would be deterred. And then they go back to PVE. They go back to the open world. So doing something like that, I think would be really good. Mm -hmm. Like bringing in a system like that, where it's like you get rewarded for this amount of time, but as soon as you're done with that, you get nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So you can still go in if you want to go in, but it will be purely for fun purposes. It won't be for anything else. You don't get anything from it. Like you've got what your weekly cap is. So go do something else, basically. Oh, I, I like that. That's interesting. There was also yeah. there was also some talk about something else from WoW. Maybe you know that. I I never was around for that. Like I I, I played uh, vanilla and then I left. Um, yeah. Somebody no, I played, said like, pretty much every experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was uh, they had some like arenas where you could like watch from above at some point. Some PvP arenas where you could watch from above. Apparently. Um, I don't know how that worked, but that sounded pretty interesting. So that was like one of the suggestions that you have like a, a PVP arena where like people can like 2v2 or whatever, but it's like it's in the open world and other people can spectate it by like... Yeah, there, there were some... certain places in well like that, but uh, there was a lot of issues with that and they became dead content just because anyone could come in and like when... They, so. For example, you have like an arena similar to like Roman times. You have like, you know, those arenas, big circles. You got the, the stadium. Um, and anyone that was within the circle of that would, for instance, their flag timer would start going down. Like regardless of whether you're PBE or whatever, you'd go in there and your flag timer would start going down. And as soon as that went down, you were flagged to everybody. Problem was you could watch people, but then trolls and stuff like that would come in 
and like you could tell what they were going to try and do they would interrupt the 1v1 and then it just became a clusterfuck of like just just people fighting each other and it wasn't fun anymore because it wasn't controlled it wasn't a 2v2 mm. anymore someone could come in at any time and make it a 3v2 or troll you and throw something out there or cc you you know so i think that would become a problem if it was in the open world i, um, I don't think that's what they they were suggesting i think that must have been something else because oh, what okay, they were talking yeah. about was specifically a scenario where you can watch but you cannot interfere at all like, so maybe like a queue system so it's like i want a 2v2 and then like those people would go in, you'd watch them go, yeah. and then they come back out. Yeah, essentially. They get forced out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that could be an interesting way to go about it. I don't... Um... It, it would definitely be an interesting pacing, right? Because not everyone could like be in at the same time. But you no. would, uh, you'd always you'd de you'd definitely develop a lot of like rivalries and stuff. And like yeah, everyone hangs I, I... around the ring as well. Uh, yeah, like the PvE players that aren't necessarily interested in actually doing it themselves can sit there and be like, all right, let's see if anyone's down there. Go down yeah. there and and just watch some fights, watch some banter. And because of proximity chat in this game, I think, <laughs> dude, that's like the best thing for me. I think like every game should have proximity chat. It's, it's yes. yes, there's a lot of trials, but there's a lot of really good moments. As yeah. Well. The only the only concern that I had with that suggestion when I heard it was like, what if like there's like a really popular fight and then there's way too many people and it just causes lag for the fighters that would be annoying but yeah i guess that wouldn't be that common anyway so yeah yeah well we have been talking for a very long time so oh, we really? should uh yeah it's been like 50 nearly an hour so <laughs> maybe we'll windle it down there but um definitely thank you for coming on like that's huge for yeah me. of course thank you for having me great. like yeah yeah like and definitely go check him out like he's if you guys don't know who he is already then you definitely should um, he's uh, got a lot of really inf interesting information. He was one of the first people that I started watching uh, alongside Damone Kim. Um, and yeah, he's just super interesting. And if you want to check out some of my PvP stuff, more than welcome to do that too. I was going <laughs> to say, <laughs> right back at you. If you want to you see some in-depth mechanics or if you want to yell at someone over their PvP skills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dude, definitely. I'm the person to yell at. It's it's um, it's so interesting. Whenever you see whenever you see anyone post a PvP montage, there are people ready to just rip it apart. <laughs> yeah, no, I know that. Like they were saying, like uh, one of my two one of my two v ones on my Spo montage. Uh, I'll quickly say is like they're quite low level, but they had the advantage on me because they started attacking me in the darkness zone, and I ran out of pots. Yeah. Like, that's why I, I showcased that video. It wasn't because it was like, you know, if I had my pots and I had all that stuff, it would have been a, a completely easy fight for me. But because I ran out of pots and they were on me, like, it just goes to show that, like, yeah, sure, the PvP scaling wasn't as great then, but just to be able to get out of that situation with no heals whatsoever and to be, I was, if you saw from the video, I was getting attacked by like a huge group of mobs like it wasn't just them it was the cpus that were in the zone as well yeah. that were hindering me from being able to do anything about this situation and i thought that that would be very interesting for people to see that like it's not only the players you have to worry about in the open world it's also like the creatures that are around you you can't afford to like run through a giant pack of mobs because then you get the mobs are getting free damage for your opponent yeah did you did you by any sense uh, chance see the fight between uh, Duelist and Big Bear from this beta? No, 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 I haven't. No. <laughs> we, we, on that topic, on the topic of mobs, so they were fighting in a in a one of the elite areas because they were farming there. Um, and what happened is they actually downed each other at the same time. They were both using a fire staff, I think, and they just hit each other at the same and were both downed. But yeah. then one of the PvE mobs was still aggroed on them, and one of the PvE mobs just went straight for Duelist and just killed him so he couldn't <laughs> couldn't even be rest. And then Big Bear got the PvP XP for that, got the weapon XP and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that no, was, that's crazy. That was brilliant that's to great. watch. I, I love <laughs> these, like... On one hand, it's super tilting when you have an otherwise like very winnable fight and then you have a mob sticking to you and it just staggers yeah. you. But on the other hand, I love the randomness that comes from it and like the... Oh yeah, like the open world is like, well, hands down the most fun PvP, I think. That's a, I haven't experienced Wars yet, so I can't say that. But from my experience so far, yeah. that that has been better than any MMO I've ever seen. Especially when the um, scaling was in the closed beta. I think I yeah. had a lot of fun with that, being able to... Um, challenge someone 10 levels higher than me and yeah. then, like have the confidence to fight me and a little bit of an advantage and then getting stomped and like they were just like oh like 
now they're going to have to second guess the grouping stuff. They're going to have to second guess attacking lobbies because if they're a great player, they're going to beat you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, for sure, but um, yeah, for walls, I, got, I, I think I think walls are a very different beast because they're way more strategy focused. It, it, like the individual PvP skill still matters, but yeah, it's but a, your builds are going to be completely different. Yeah, but like like it's the a, whole strategy is so thing. different. And I mean, I, I I'm in contact with quite a few like high level guilds uh, and how they plan to like go about their their walls and stuff, and it's just. It's it's a completely different story that is very disconnected from the uh, open yes. world PvP. I've definitely got like my, I've got my uh, notes down for siege like strategies and working off other people's stuff and my own stuff from when I was in Guild Wars, uh, commanding in Guild Wars. Uh, I think will transition over quite well. Yeah. Um, so and there's some similar abilities that are in this game that were in Guild Wars as well that really helped people zone in, really helped people like zone out as well, and like a bunch of things. So I think those um, will help me be a better commander, be a better person to lead wars and stuff like that if I get settlements. So how and much? That's the like how many people are in your in your company now? Like for launch? Um, look, confirmed. I would say comfortably confirmed confirmed and we had probably only a third on the open beta that were um a part of the company and the rest kind of said like nah like when we're, we're not even gonna play yeah um so i would say probably around the 60 to 70 mark would be confirmed but then we've got miscellaneous because i got a lot of people saying we have a group of people that i'm a part of and it's only them in the discord now yeah um, and then they're like, I've got 10 friends that come with me. We play together and we want to be a part of your thing. So I'm hoping for the cap. And if I do get the cap, I am going to be buying another account to run another company um, for exceptional players. I'm not going to accept because obviously I'm going to have to filter out a lot of people um, not too far into the release because we need to divert our um our view and what our where, where our company wants to go in the right direction so at the moment we've just got numbers um and probably about 50 50 pvp pve yeah we, where i where i would like to be like 65 35 i think something around there 65 percent being pvp uh minded people hang on one sec not a problem it's got a got a delivery here not for me but yeah <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Delivery time. Delivery yeah, time. yeah, not for me. But yeah, okay. Tell the people, off. tell the people what you're getting. What do you got? No, no, no. It's, it's not for me. That's why. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's fine. It's just sorting yeah, other well, people's stuff. <laughs> well, yeah. As I say, we'll end it there because it's got nearly an hour. But yeah, it was awesome talking to you. I had a lot of fun. Like, yeah, I, likewise. You know what I mean? Like, so uh, definitely in future, as I said, I'll say the same thing I said to Pritch. Like, if there's something, if there's something that you want to cover, if there's something that like. um comes up in the game we'll cover it in a podcast and it will be extra for the people that want to listen um and we'll cover it there and then and post it on the day so like yeah cool awesome man all right and after that we ended up talking for another half hour thanks a ton to ritzy for hosting this you should definitely go check him out i will leave a link to his channel in the description in the whatever panels at the end that you will definitely be able to see it somewhere so you can show him some support if you like this. And other than that, if you're new here, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell. There might be another video later today actually regarding housing, so you can stay tuned for that if I can finish it up completely in time. Either way, I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.